This is your introduction to Poly Pattern Design, which is a CAD software for fashion design. So this is it right here. The one right below it is for the marker. This would be in very different tutorials. Um, this one is just a little intro to walk your way around the software. Okay, so as your software opens up, you're going to have this blue rectangle in the middle. And you can see initializing, it's actually starting up the software. Now, for some reason, my um, screen capture is actually slowing this down quite a bit. So I've got the spinning wheel of death right now on the middle of the screen. And okay, now they have this. So I am actually doing this as a demo version. Um, so I will have limited capabilities. If you're just going to be testing the software out, um, this is also what you'd be working with. Um, and you can actually download um, the free demo version on our website at porcelain.com. And I'll get that up on the screen for you. So once you have this here, you're just going to click anywhere in the blue rectangle. And then it's going to pop this open. This is to open an existing pattern. Well, we really don't have one, so we can create one. Um, I actually created one just a second ago. So I'm going to hit cancel because we don't have a garment we're opening. And then we're going to go to Garment and New Garment. So now I'm just going to call it this one. Yes. Okay, now we can't do anything because we actually don't have our drawing board yet. So now we need to go and do a new pattern. So every garment has a pattern. And let's see, okay. And if you look right here where it says in red, Demo, um, this is going to really limit what you're able to do with the software. You will not be able to print and you will not be able to save. So this is really a full working version except for those two, those two items. Okay, so what you're going to be starting with, um, and actually if you want to, we'll do a little, quick, quick little intro to what you've got on your menu bar. So here under file, we have where you would have, um, you know, output options, print options, and we can do this um, in just a little bit. Um, and you can also import a variety of different files from other CAD software. Under edit, um, we really don't have many things that are available right now. We do have our preferences. And the preferences under general, this is where you can change to centimeters or inches. Right now I'm in inches because that's what I use but you can certainly use this in centimeters. Now I have noticed if you do change this right away, um, there it does not change it on your screen. And I remember I had to do something different. I had to figure that out again. But let's just say we have inches. We have our the length of our notch. Here is 0.2. Um, so that's a little bit big, but I'm just going to leave it for right now. Um, and then this is a default seam allowance. We can actually put a default on here. I don't put anything on here because I work a lot in lingerie design, but I also w work a lot in ready to wear. So that seam allowance does change from anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a half an inch, sometimes even three quarters. So I don't like to designate anything in here. Um, and then this is the direction the, of your fabric. So we can always go and change this at another time. So we're just going to hit save. So under edit, that's really all you can do until you've got a file. Uh, modify, we can't do anything yet. View, view, we'll be using a few of these options, uh, just not right now because we have nothing to view. Um, and this is where we deal with our grading. And here, obviously, we have no pattern, so there's nothing we can do at this point. Um, auxiliary is kind of like everything that doesn't fit under these other categories would be auxiliary. Um, so this is where you can determine and label what your seam allowance is, what shape you want your seam corner to be. So if you have a seam allowance you just want it to be chopped off at like a quarter of an inch, well you can do that right here. And this is also where you can set the direction of the pattern or adjust it. Pro, and this is, um, there was actually a version of the software that was not Pro but that is not offered anymore and trust me you I use pro all the time and here what I mainly use pro for is I like to do duplicate and lock so if I'm working on a pattern I can always copy it and then make changes to it right on top of it so you can actually see what your original pattern was um, and then the other one I mainly use is to define dimension and this is what I use to um, determine 
the different, oh, what do you call it, um, and to make sure all the, the seams are supposed to be what they are. Okay, under garment, this is, we will get to this at another point. And help, hey, you see here it says, what was that beep? As you notice, you're going to go through the software and it's going to beep at you. You can come up here and it'll give you a definition of what that is. So what we're mainly going to start with and what you want to get used to using are our guidelines. So imagine this is your pattern paper. Um, you know, we don't, we have it, I think we can look at it as a grid, but I'm just going to look at it with the rulers. Um, and we would actually be drawing lines according to measurements. So we can use these guidelines to draw those lines for us. So here we have a vertical guideline and they're called, these are all called snaps, snap tools. Um, I probably will use the wrong terms on them, so I'm mostly going to be pointing and clicking. So click on the guideline and then here. So I'm going to do a couple of these guidelines so I can show you an example of something. Um, and this last one here, well actually, yeah, okay, so I'm going to do these two and then this one I want to specify, I want to make another line that is exactly two inches from this one. So I'm going to go to modify and duplicate guide and then I'm going to do two. Now any positive numbers are going to be on the right side and any negative numbers are going to be on the left. So we're going to do negative 0.5. And you can see that here. And actually, this is uh, my screen is really zoomed out. So I'm just going to move all of these over. And if you look here, we have uh, this magnifying glass, which you can basically go in and draw an area to zoom in on. You can zoom further in like that or zoom out like that. Um, if you're used to using control plus and control minus, those do not work with the software. So I know you'll probably end up doing it because I do it all the time until I remember, oh wait, I can't do that in this software. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to draw a couple guidelines that are in this direction. And of course I can always go in and modify and put duplicate guide. So if I duplicate the guide in a positive form, it's actually going to be below it and a negative form is going to be above it. So I'm going to put negative 0.5 and positive 3 and we'll draw the lines there. Okay, so the reason I'm doing it like this, I'm just basically drawing a bunch of lines to have a grid line and I'm going to create a pattern that is completely nonsensical. Sensible, that's the word. Okay. So we're going to draw our line by using a polygon. So we have two polygon options. One is a closed polygon, which will actually kind of create a full pattern. Um, or you have an open polygon. Um, I'm not going to use the open one right now. That is probably for a further, more advanced lesson. So for the open polygon, we can actually just take and draw wherever we want. You know, something like this. But you, I can never find the end. Oh, I'm just going to escape and get out of that. So I'm going to use these guidelines to draw me a shape. And for using it and getting right in a point, we're going to use these snaps here. This one goes to a point. Now we don't have any points on here, but we have intersections. And that's what this little X is saying, that that's the intersection. So with this selected and this selected, you can go from here and any of these points, and you don't even have to be like slightly on it. And we'll just go, yeah, we'll go right there. So here we have a shape. And I know this looks like nothing right now. You're going to select the side. I want to actually make this curved. I want this to curve down. So I'm really not sure what I'm drafting right now. I'm just drawing a picture for you. So I'm going to hit smooth. So under modify, you can go to smooth. I'm going to click out here and then I'm going to double click on that line I just did. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to create curved points on here. So you see that little plus sign that I just did? If we did that, if we just added this to this line, you see it's a giant, it's a big plus sign with a circle around it. And that makes a line like that. Well, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit Control Z to get out of that. I want to make this line curved. So I go to Modify, Smooth. 
I'm going to click here, go to Modify. Well, I already clicked Smooth, so now let's just say that you didn't remember if you actually hit um, Smooth or not. It will he tell you right here whether that line was already smooth or not. So this is unsmooth. I don't want to do that. So I've got my smooth here. So I'm just going to double click on that line. If you look at my arrow, see how my arrow has a little kind of point on the back of it? Or a tail on it, I guess. When you double click on it, you lose the tail. Now this is basically telling you that you can add a curved point. And it can be anywhere over here. It doesn't have to be right in the middle and I can actually do that again and see how because that line is still selected I can actually just add another point point. and that's basically how we start drawing our pattern and uh, let's see what else can I show you right at this time but this is how we start our grid so I would play around with maybe getting a um, getting a basic sloper and just how you would draw lines draw the lines of the sloper. And maybe I'll do a little video on how to do that, but this is just your basic introduction. You'll learn all the other tools as you go. Um, let's see, for example, this one flips a pattern, which can be useful. Um, let's see, another one, if we want to cut something in half, well, we have the, the cut, which actually just makes a cut line. This is the cut and separate line this is the glue and this is glue together no matter what shape they are so we have a couple different options but right now here this is where I'm gonna leave this one at just gonna deselect that and uh, explore try and get to this point try and draw a shape and uh, we'll go from there